Hey YouTube, today we are talking about my favorite breed. Tom's absolute favorite breed. In fact, my very first image was, was Tom strutting with his massive black poodle, yeah. literally like pacing, sort of, well she wasn't pacing, she was doing beautiful yeah. work. Uh, and she really was strutting. And I think that was the first time I ever um, met Tom and a dog and it was uh, his, um, her Beloved grandma. grandma, and, um, yep, her and, grandma. Uh, beautiful Illy. And Illy, uh, really started uh, a crazy love of poodles for you, yeah, right, Tom? absolutely. And so we've got Magma here today. And what we thought would be useful, because they are such a special breed, is to talk actually about how to train your poodle. And it might be that you have a poodle cross as well. And so the considerations will be the same when we're thinking about those as well. Now, the first thing to say is that Magma is, you've got to kind of approach the training of a poodle a little bit like it's a dog cross a human human because their brain is very much that of assessing whether something is a good deal, assessing what's in it for them, assessing whether this is really something that they want to be expending their energy on. And so you've got to have, you've got to make it a really good deal. If you try and approach training them with punishment and force, they will literally go, you know what, human, I appreciate what you're saying, but I'm gonna do me over here, you do you over there, and that is the end of the conversation. And it's, you know what, then you've gotta work on actually teaching them actually, you know what, you are something to be trusted. And I think that's a really uh, big thing I've noticed is that the building of the partnership and the trust with yeah. a poodle is something that's very, very important, and yeah. you actually don't really wanna break that. No, right? exactly. Second thing that we've then got to think about is variety. So that's variety in um, the, the games that you play, the variety in the way that you ask them. I'm, the variety in the food that you deliver, the variety yeah. in the method in the way that you deliver yeah. the food. And I think this is probably the biggest lesson a poodle has taught me. Absolutely. And you know, what What I love about them, and you know, Illy, her, her grandmother taught, taught me this lesson. And I was so confused to start with, you know, because I came from a, a world of German shepherds and, and border collies, right? Quite literal in the way that they approach the world. And I would, I would teach her something, like, I don't know, I would teach her a sit, let's say. Let's go really simple, I'd teach her a sit. But if I asked multiple times for that sit, she'd start to be like, ah, it's not the sit that you want, clearly. Maybe it's a sit with a right paw raise. Maybe it's a spin and a sit. And you know, the, the level of like variety that they need, if you ask them for something a few times, they're like, well, it must not be the right answer that I've been giving. I'm gonna add something in. So when you've got something that you like, move on to the next thing. Make, make sure that your sessions are filled with a lot of different things. Don't, you, you know, work on a few different things in a session, one by one. It's gonna kind of unlock their brain, right? And there's a reason why they, they used to be used so commonly in the circus because they're incredibly smart they love to do lots of different things and they love to work with a human they will never work for a human that is for sure and i think the important thing here to to really notice um about um tom and uh, magma is that this journey is developed so mm. really here what you're doing is you're shortcutting all of those years yeah. of um of, of poodle ownership yeah. uh, or being owned by poodles yeah. i should say <laughs> um, and and all those years Years have been like really like white because actually what Tom's doing here and saying here is that that he's kind of already shortcutting for you. Yeah. Now the next tip that that we've got for you is actually that this is a real hunting breed. They would be used as gun dogs, right? Um, and um, and water retrievers, and they've been used for all kinds of things over the course of their history. And so you've got to realise that you're going to have to convince them that being close and with you is, is, is a good is deal. A good deal it's, right? And it's not always a good deal when and actually there's a lot of other things going on out there. So how do you go about doing so that? So we might think about, for example, some middle. We might think about, for example, some we might think about, for example, some leg weaves. We want to have variety in the way that their close interactions, hi, their close interactions happen with us. We, you know, you want to think about 10 different things that you, that they could do when close to you, you know, leg weaves middle being, um, being just two of them that are going to be loads of fun. And they think, oh, this, this guy, you know, he's got some fun games up his sleeve. So proximity is the next tip um, that we've got for you. Now, the next tip is, and this really applies, all of these tips that we're giving you, they really apply to all of dog training, but I just think poodles are the best trainers of dog trainers because they will not accept any less than exceptional. They have high <laughs> criteria, very high criteria for you. And so um, that is when you spot your poodle doing something you don't want them to do, 
approaching that as a I want to stop them from doing that is only going to make it even more fun, right? It's oh, they're only going to want like, to do it more. They're like that sign where you see wet paint, and they're like, when I see the sign that yeah. says wet paint, I always make sure yeah. I go up and do this. To yeah, me. exactly. Like they definitely, definitely, <laughs> exactly. definitely, like a red flag. So what you've got to do is take the approach of what do I want instead, right? So for example, maybe um, I don't know your your poodle steals from the kitchen counter. Telling them to stop stealing from the kitchen counter it is not going to work. Teaching them. To stay on a boundary in the kitchen until released, and that the value's there. You know what? Magma would love to do that. She would think that that was like the best thing in the world because she's got a job, she's got something to do, and it there's just there's a framework, so, there's yeah. a, there's an understanding, there's a level of knowledge, and she's got something important that you are going to continue to make part of that day. Whereas actually, if you don't really structure it or give it yeah. some level of framework, or um, a, 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 I suppose also employment, yeah, right? You're giving them employment, and, and you're you're what you're doing is you're they don't realize it, but you're giving them something to do, which is incompatible with the thing that you don't want them to do, right? Now, your next tip, and I think this is really vital, and I think this is really important to acknowledge, and I think this is very important, particularly for the poodle, and, and for many breeds, but for the poodle and all of their crosses, they're intelligent. Yeah. They're really, really intelligent. These guys are not like, I'll be, I'll be honest, please don't be offended if you're a Labrador owner. We, we know the Labradors very, very well, and they're like, yes, 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 yeah. got it. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Throw the ball, get the ball. Yay. Yeah. Again, 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 again. These guys are like, throw the ball, get it again. Yeah. Nice. And then they're like, why would I do it again? Like, you, you'd have to Was I doing like, it wrong? Because like, I already brought this try ball back. Different <laughs> now? Should I try something different? Like, you're working with a slightly different brain. And, and these guys are smart. They're mm. really smart. Yeah. And I think they're some of the smartest dogs, which is why they often get in probably more trouble. Now, I know the mm. Labradors around here and the guys that go, the guys that, that are sort of very tra traditional around here, the gun dog owners, yeah. and these guys, they're like, yeah, old man's dog sits on a peg, behaves yeah. itself. And I can understand that a Labrador would do that. It would sit there all. Yeah. All day waiting for whatever and just sitting. Yeah. These guys would be looking, doing. Yeah. Mind games are needed for these guys. They'd I don't be, mean like mind they'd games. They'd be picking up the gun. Yes, they'd be <laughs> off running with it. They, these guys need a level of mental enrichment yeah. that I would say some dogs don't. And I yeah. think some dogs will manage without it. I think that all dogs like it, but I think some dogs will manage without it better mm. than others. These guys need it, yeah. I think. You they know, need it. A, a great example is, um, you know, if you want to do like agility with your, with your poodle, for example, you'll find that like a collie, they'll do it because of the movement stimulation. They'll do it because of the love of the obstacles, right? They'll do it because of the love of that activity. They'll do it for the love of being a team with the owner. And trying to convince them otherwise is actually really not going to be... They're, they're not in it for that. They're in it for a good deal. They're in it for working and with you, not for you. Say you were training a poodle in agility, you would also be considering repetitions are not a great move. Yeah. Keep repeating, repeating, Get repeating. it once, so move on. <laughs> like pick your trainers, pick the way that you're thinking. So for yeah. us, I suppose what we're saying is these are really smart, yeah. really cool little dogs. Uh, you are going to need to do a little bit more of your um, attention to detail on husbandry and vet care and, yeah. and, and coat care, because I've seen many a poodle um, who um, they've tried to keep the coat long and then have had a bit of a moment with that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the, I guess that would be a tip. And this is a very practical tip. Notice that Magma right now is in a very short clip and that's because it's winter and you know she we we share a relationship bank account and i would rather you know fill our relationship bank account with fun games and, and things you at spend this time a lot of, of time on the moorland yeah you spend loads of time with horses yeah even now she You're was out. bathed last night ready to to greet you all today and she's already got some mud and on it's her legs literally this is a dog who has a crazy amount of fun with horses yeah a crazy she's amount a of fun she's a brilliant horse dog she's a normal um she's a proper dog, dog. yeah right. and so We've got to balance that with the so type clip, of trim that we use. So her yeah. clip is a fairly um, low maintenance <laughs> yeah. clip for you. Absolutely, as well, right? she's actually got the same um, same clip setting as the horse. Just do them both at the same time. There you go. <laughs> um, and so being mindful of the fact that yeah, you can have some big fancy trim, but then you've got to maintain that. And if you don't grow that as a super positive experience, that's going to be withdrawals from your relationship bank account. That's going to show in your recall. It's going to show in how stress free your walks are. And actually that's a battle that really we don't need to pick at certain times a year. In the summer, she can be in, you know, full coat and have the fancy look. But the reality is that I quite like her like this. It's very functional and we live a very functional life, right? She gets a load of freedom because of all these skills that she's learned through the games, through the YouTube channel that you can check out after watching this one. Remember, Game Changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. 
and check out our new 25 day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description.